world, the Earth. Four and a half billion years ago, the Earth is created from the debris left over from the formation of the Sun. Dust and debris collide and clump together. Once these clumps grow into objects about half a mile in diameter, they create enough gravity to attract more material. Slowly, these clumps grow into as many as 20 planets. As these new planets orbit the sun, they begin to collide. One collision with the planet Theia, which creates the moon, obliterates the surface of the Earth. The energy from the collision makes the Earth incredibly hot. At around 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, it's more than seven times hotter than the inside of a cremation furnace. Earth is a massive molten ball of boiling lava. This is primeval hell, where thousands of asteroids and comets bombard our world. But deep within the planet, a process starts that will lead to the first land. The heaviest elements, lead and nickel, sink down toward the center of the Earth to form a molten core. The lighter elements, including oxygen and silicon, rise toward the surface, where they erupt in volcanoes of molten rock. Slowly, the Earth's surface cools. Molten lava solidifies to form patches of crust, the seeds of the first continents. But even as the first land is born, it faces a battle to survive. We were being bombarded by a large number of asteroids very early in the history of the planet. So there's a lot of dynamic change from being walloped by giant impacts, disturbing things. Geology professor Sam Bowring is an expert in early Earth and the genesis of the continents. When we had a, an early crust is, is an interesting question. I suspect we've had, an, we had an early crust from day one. The question is, how long was that preserved? When the Earth was being bombarded constantly by asteroids, the chance of preserving any small chunk of that crust was very low. The relentless bombardment destroys the new planet's crust almost as soon as it forms. This recycling of the surface continues for many millions of years. But as the flux of asteroids began to wane, and as the Earth matured a little bit, I suspect the early crust lasted a little bit longer. Eventually, the barrage from asteroid impact slows down. The surface of the Earth continues to cool. The Earth, 4.4 billion years ago. Our planet is now 150 million years old, and the first primitive land masses have formed. They are not like the seven instantly recognizable continents of today. They are just small rafts of rock floating on the mantle. But now a type of rock appears on the Earth's surface that will form the nucleus of future continents. A rock buoyant enough not to sink into the bowels of the Earth. Granite. Dating rocks is a complex process because over long periods of time, the minerals can break down and reform into new rocks. Scientists look for an ingredient of rock that is tough enough to withstand the test of time. The answer is zircon, a crystal that is made inside molten rock as it solidifies. Even if the rock is destroyed, the zircons are durable enough to survive. Zircon is an incredibly interesting mineral and it incorporates uranium and excludes lead and that sets us up to have basically nature's time capsule. using this technique geologists date this granite at three and a half billion years old this makes it some of the oldest rock on the planet at earth we see that it is full of change change is, is part of nature and this change continues today and will continue into the future the future of new york is uh, go going to be uh, rather traumatic North America and Europe are going to collide with one another. The world as we know it 
will be unrecognizable. This is not a portrait of the Earth after a devastating global disaster. This is how nature will shape our planet many millions of years in the future. This incredible remodeling is just part of a natural cycle that has shaped the Earth for the last four billion years and will continue to do so until the sun finally destroys its surface once and for all.